Dagon Kodule, the Mobozo Yari, Tesanga, and Tedding Edi, Don't you touch on Tedi, don't you start, so you need don't you touch on it? And it was Chogan when you go to it. Da i don't know Kimindo. 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 Tak, 
todos en su centro. Todos los dos, Oh, no, 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 no.
Tu sei una buona cosa, oh Maria, oh Maria, oh Maria. Oh Maria, oh Maria, oh Maria. Oh, it's time to quality. It's time to quality. It's time to quality. Tak hodně to. Ka. Tak hodně to. Tak je to vše, tak. Můžu jen se tam korvet, je? Komar, jo? Kdy? Kusí se něco komar? Kde je můj otec? Kde je můj otec? Pobyl jsem. Tak pobyl jsem. Я в доходе.
하죠. 그죠. 한번. 对对对。 
Dat is de moois gestoond, de moois. Kolso. Будет все, да?
ちょっとそちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっと
Sí, sí, sí. No, 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 Ahora. Ya, está ahí. Por ahí. Te anda. Ah, tenía ese monguchi aquí. En el. So many people who are interested and have requested me uh, if I could confer uh, the Avalok and Shura initiation. I can't. And therefore, I am doing this on the internet. <laughs> Last year, I think I did the 
uh, Avalokiteshvara uh, Great Initiation uh, through, on, uh, through webcast. And so through that, many uh, Tibetans inside Tibet, uh, so I have told people from inside Tibet that I would also intend and uh, visualize to give the initiation uh, to them and they should also have the same intention to receive it. So with regard to the highest yoga tantra, uh, there are the practice of keeping the highest uh, yoga tantra uh, vows, the tantric vows, and therefore as a preliminary to the, um, as a preliminary to the, the cycle of Manjushri teachings, I gave the uh, Yamantaka initiation. And so that was done on for a few disciples. But this initiation, I'm giving it uh, on the, um, um, through this webcast. And so if you uh, keep your attention uh, single-pointedly and uh, have the uh, motivation to receive, and I also have the intention, then you will receive it. And so Avalokiteshvara uh, is a deity of compassion, as uh, his, uh, one verse praise says. So, of course, cultivate uh, uh, compassion is something that we need to uh, cultivate through meditation and visualization and uh, familiarization. And then, uh, if you do the practice of Avalokiteshvara and visualize Avalokiteshvara uh, before you and so forth, and make prayer to Avalokiteshvara, it also helps to uh, um, increase your compassion. And so for the bodhisattvas, as it is said, they, they, with wisdom they focus on enlightenment and with compassion on sentient beings. And so here, with regards to the wisdom, it has to be coupled with the compassion, and the wisdom here is not a, a, a wisdom that's gone stray, but the correct and per, uh, wisdom. <laughs> so all seven billion people on this earth do not want suffering, but are... Uh, want happiness that's the same with everyone so we see in the news channels the media about discrimination on the basis of color or religion these days and then there's killing due to that and then there are some who even take it as a pride to be able to kill somebody or others Yes, just yesterday I saw in, on the television news somewhere in Minnesota or somewhere in America. So one uh, black person was, had actually fallen under a car and a police came and he actually uh, pushed his knee on the neck of that black person. So because of this uh, discrimination, racism, uh, on the basis of race, th this such things are done. And then there is also um, people causing lots of violence and conflict on the basis of uh, religious discrimination, sectarianism. So basically, we as human beings, our nature is compassionate. So all sentient beings, even a small insect or a small bug, has to survive through compassion. So of course, the bugs do not get milk from its mother, but the mother takes care of the baby. So if you pay attention, so all living beings with the f experience of feeling and sensation survive through compassion, love, 
Therefore, if we as human beings do not harm one another, but help one another, serve one another, and be compassionate with another, then we will have a peaceful world which is free from, uh, without any fear, anxiety. Um, without compassion, if you actually let your life be carried away by jealousy, uh, pride, arrogance, and uh, uh, anger and hatred, then there will not be happiness for yourself as well as individuals. And therefore, compassion is very crucial f for our survival. I usually ta have uh, talk about my four major commitments. So the first commitment has to do with the seven billion people having um, being compassionate. So if you are more compassionate, the more compassionate you are, you are happier. If you are full of um, sense of competition, jealousy, and so forth, then you will not be happy. As we say in the prayer, in order to fulfill the um, aims or interests of oneself, myself, and others, I shall uh, cultivate or develop bodhicitta. And so, for your, even when you, if in, even if you want happiness for yourself, you need to practice this. And uh, uh, bodhicitta, and if, if you wish happiness for others, for that also, but you need happiness, uh, bodhicitta. And therefore, love and compassion is something which is beneficial to all sentient beings, and particularly human beings. As human beings, we have this marvelous intelligence when it serves as a slave of our negative, destructive emotions, and then we cause all kinds of havoc. Whereas if this wisdom or intelligence is used constructively, then it can be beneficial to yourself and others. And therefore, it is very important to have a good heart or warm heart. Though we, all of us, are in same in not wanting suffering but wanting happiness, but ma many of us actually seek happiness from outside uh, and do not pay attention to our inner world of mind. So the material development through materialist, through the modern uh, uh, education <clears throat> does not pay attention to the, uh, the fact that our um, happiness or suffering depends on whether we have disciplined, controlled mind or uncontrolled and undisciplined mind. So without only focusing on intellect, intellect alone, but combining it with a warm heart, we need that. And so this is what I focus on, I emphasize. So I tell people that as human beings, we need to be warm-hearted. This will help yourself as well as others and the world at large. Though everyone is the same in not wanting suffering but wanting happiness, but how much suffering there is co uh, as a result of human wrongdoings. And this is because of our negative destructive emotions like attachment, anger, and so forth. So we are not talking only about the past, uh, future lives, but even in this life, we need the warm heart to be, to have happiness. And so, with regard to Avalokiteshwara, who is the deity of compassion, as a, someone who believes in re religion, if we could also recite the mantra of Avalokiteshwara, the six-syllable mantra, that also will um, serve as a um, uh, catalyst or help in uh, increasing our compassion. And so the main purpose of giving the Avalokiteshwara initiation is to have a good heart. 
And so whether you are a Buddhist or not, doesn't matter. This is the purpose. So as human beings, if we are, I mean, if we could be a good people, that would be very helpful. So all the major religious traditions of the world, though they are philosophically different, have different philosophical uh, ideas, but uh, all these religious traditions teach love, compassion, uh, self-discipline, tolerance, and patience, uh, self-discipline, and therefore there is every reason for the religious for these religions to be harmonious with one another, and therefore. In connection with promotion of love and compassion, we need to promote this, promote uh, the religious harmony. Otherwise, if people, uh, I mean, people would say that uh, they talk about love and compassion, but they're the ones, the religions, people following the religions are the ones who fight amongst themselves. And therefore, we need to make people understand that compassion, love and compassion are the foundation for our happiness, even for our physical health. We need peaceful mind and compassionate mi mind. And even the scientists say that, and they also say that the innate or the basic human nature is compassionate. So this is not talking about religion, but something which we can actually experience, see from our own experience in life. So the more compassionate and loving you are, you are happier, the happier you are. And so the, the second commitment that I have is this, because all religions teach, Compassion, love, if you practice these, then uh, and there will be uh, the, the, the second commitment that I have is, uh, my second commitment is religious harmony. So if you practice love and compassion, you'll be more calm, gentle, and so forth. So this is not impossible, religious harmony. In India, if you look at India, it is an example for religious harmony. There are many different religious traditions, like the Sankhya school, and then uh, other uh, Vedic traditions, and Jainism, and so forth. So, as Chandrakirti says, so all these religious traditions, though they are different, they have lived harmoniously, coexisted in India. There's no um, uh, account of people killing one another in the name of religion. And then religions that have emigrated to India, such as Christianity, Judaism, Zoroastrianism, and so forth, also coexist in this land of India, so for over a thousand years, this religious harmony has existed in India, and therefore we can see this is possible. And so my, I talk about religious harmony as my second commitment. And then as the third commitment is, as a Tibetan, Tibetans um, put their hope <coughs> in me, and I have karmic connection with Tibetans as well, and they trust me. So one year I was traveling in the northeastern part of India in a small plain, and it was quite turbulent. So I, I actually feared what would happen to the six million Tibetans what would happen to them if I die? So, so they, the, the Tibetans put their faith, uh, trust on me, and trust me. They put their hope on me and trust me. So uh, accordingly, I need to think of benefiting and helping them as much as I can so when people respect me 
and I also have the responsibility towards them. So we are in exile. So we have lost our country and become refugees and exiles. But this has also become a blessing in disguise. So for over a thousand years, we have a very unique, uh, strong connection with India. We call India the noble land of India. So the Buddha himself appeared in India, and then Master Nagarjuna and his disciples and followers, as well as Asanga and his disciples and followers, have, were Indians. So our knowledge, the source or the origin of our knowledge, Buddhism and so forth, is India. And therefore, India today, being a democratic country, I, I had a connection, I had connection with uh, Pandit the Nehru, the first Indian Prime Minister, and then I have many Indian leaders who are my fr friends. And so in India, we have freedom to help and benefit Tibetans as well as other people in the world, and therefore becoming exiles has been a blessing in disguise for us. So we in exile, and particularly the monastic institutions of uh, uh, learning institutions. Here uh, I can see on the television uh, the monitor Gaden Chirambuche and other masters and monks. So you are the ones who are the custodians of this tradition, the Nalanda tradition of Buddhism, which today we can, with, uh, with which we can today have discussions with modern scientists as well. And then we can actually um, make contribution to the world at large through our knowledge. So I have mentioned this before, and you also are doing a service to our own culture and religion, to the Tibetans, and through them to the world at large. So we, the Tibetans in exile, have actually lived a life worth living, even as exiles. So politics is something different, but the most important thing is for over a thousand years since Chandrakshita passed this Nalanda tradition on to us, in which we, we can actually practice, which we can practice through reason and logic. So this we can call this Nalanda tradition that we have as the treasure of the world. So this is something which even non-believers can take interest in and they can and they would. So as a Tibetan, in order to fulfill the Tibetan wish, so when we first came into exile in India, so the people were calling the, uh, us Lamaism, Thurman and Burzin, Alex Burzin and Bob Thurman know this. So people actually perceived our tradition as something where there's emphasis, so much emphasis on wearing different hats. But today, we 
We know that this Tibetan Buddhist tradition is accepted as Nalanda tradition, which can actually have sit together with modern scientists and from whom the, who also uh, learn uh, beneficial lessons from our tradition. So the tradition is some, a part of Indian tradition, but in India, what has happened is the materialistic uh, education spread in India and also that has taken the toll on Indian um, uh, traditional knowledge. So India more or less has become materialistic over the last centuries. And today we have more and more as a result of me urging Indians to revive their own ancient tradition, knowledge, wisdom. There are more and more number of Indians taking interest in doing that. And so I'm going to give this initiation of Avalokiteshvara because there is need for promotion of compassion in the world today. So we'll do the uh, preliminary process of the initiation. So first we have the preparation for the students, disciples. So usually when we do this kind of initiation, we do uh, the offering of torma to uh, this obstacle spirits, but I do not do this anymore. As we actually reflect on these lines from Shanti Deva's Bodhisattva Charaya Vatara. Today, before the, uh, all the protectors, I call on all sentient beings to the feast of enlightenment and in the meantime, that of happiness while within the cycling existence and therefore gods, demigods and so forth be joyous. So while saying this prayer, if we actually do these rituals to drive away the so-called evil spirits, beings, I mean, these beings would be, may, uh, may um, have, may suspect, what kind of person is this? In the morning, the, this person actually says, um, all sentient beings are my, uh, I mean, I'm dear to me and so forth, whereas in the evening, he does this ritual of driving us away. So therefore, I do not do the gektor, the torma offering to drive away um, evil spirits. So I just do the uh, torma offering for local uh, spirit deities or landlords. So Chirambuche is offering the mandala. Gaden Chirambuche. May the sound of the great Dhamma drum dispel the suffering of beings. May the Guru live for inconceivably eons. 
to give us teachings. Please sit down. So now, as I said, historically, Tibet, um, there's some reason or justification for saying that Tibet uh, is the land um, to be tamed by Avalokiteshvara. So if you look at history, since the time of times of the uh, Tibetan Dharma King Songtsen Gampo and Tisong Detsen and so forth, many great lamas and leaders had almost um, all of them had a uh, connection with Chandrasik, Avalokiteshvara, and therefore Avalokiteshvara is considered as the patron deity of Tibet or the special deity of Tibet to tame the land of Tibet. And generally speaking, Tibetans seem to have a good nature, a kind nature. So we are a people who have a special connection with Avalokiteshvara and the Buddha himself has said that his teaching would spread from north to north, meaning north from India is Tibet, and from there north is Mongolia. So the Tibet is also a land which was prophesied by the Buddha himself, and therefore we have a connection with him as well. And so we as Tibetans, generally speaking, are kind people, and therefore, Avalokiteshvara, we have a special uh, karmic connection with Avalokiteshvara. After coming into exile in India, from Dzongar uh, Chede Monastery, Dzongar Chede Monastery, from the western part of Tibet, near the border of Nepal. And so in the um, life story of the fifth Dalai Lama, there's mention of there were three Avalokiteshvara statues or images. One from the, uh, one is called Wadisangpo, and the other is... So when there was a turmoil in Tibet, Wadi Sangpo was actually taken from Tib uh, Tibet to Nepal and from there to India. So after it came here, and then when the Dzongkachete monks were moving from Dharamsala to South India, <laughs> I did a divination whether whether the uh, what is the statue of Avalokiteshvara should go with the monks of Dzongkha Chede Monastery who brought it from Tibet to here, uh, or should stay here. And it's, uh, the, the divination showed that uh, the Vadisangpo should stay here. So it seems Vadisangpo also likes fame because <laughs> of me. So I live as a caretaker of Vatisangpo Avalokiteshwaras, and its face seems to change um, appearance or moods. One night I had a dream of Vatisangpo. He was there in front of me like a human person, and I was asking, do you uh, realize emptiness? He said, yes. And he, I asked, do you realize emptiness directly? He said, yes. And so we were talking like person to person. And so Avalokiteshvara statue of Vatisangpo is something very unique. And so I also think, usually always think, 
Of course, I'm not a manifestation or emanation of Avalokiteshvara, Arya Avalokiteshvara, but I consider myself as a messenger of Avalokiteshvara or emissary. So today we are doing that 1,000 armed, 1,000 eyed Avalokiteshvara initiation. We are going to first do the preliminary process of the initiation. As I did the self-generation and also the, uh, the uh, I also did the uh, self-initiation. So imagine me as Avalokiteshvara himself. The most important thing to receive, to take uh, 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 tantric <coughs> uh, teachings is to have the, uh, a pure motivation. And therefore, in the ritual itself, we go through this, these outlines, <coughs> correcting the motivation and generating into the principal deity, making request and fostering firm conviction in Dadriana, taking vows and receiving blessings, draw and so forth. So whatever work we do or activity we engage in, there must be a good intention or motivation. So, of course, material progress and de development were meant for the good of human beings, but they, as the, we made more progress, this, we used this progress and development to kill and harm others. And therefore, unless you have a good motivation, it doesn't help. So, if you have a good motivation and intention, then we can have a peaceful and happy society. So, without that good intention or motivation, <clears throat> even if you may be doing a dharma practice, apparently, um, ostensibly you may be doing dharma practice, but it's, uh, in, in reality, you are not doing a dharma practice. So some people who take interest in Tantra, it says, do so for the benefit of this life alone. Tantra is meant for achieving <coughs> Buddhahood. <coughs> Sorry. So in Tantra, there is the uh, practice whereby you uh, fulfill or achieve the unique causes for um, uh, getting the unique causes for uh, attaining the two bodies of a uh, Buddha by um, visualizing and imagining yourself as a deity and doing your practice accordingly. And so, to reach Buddhahood, uh, Nagarjuna has said, through the accumulation of merit and wisdom, may I be able to complete them to attain the form and form body and the wisdom body of a Buddha, or Dharma body of a Buddha. So, of course, Tantra has to be practiced in secrecy. So, of course, those who do understand the, tarma, the, the Tantra would actually understand this. And so, in the text, it says, some seek to practice secret Dharma, wish, uh, seeking to practice secret Dharma, wish to enter the mandala here. Some others desire merit, and are still others seeking something other than that. The intelligent ones who seek the future lives should faithfully strive for transcendence. <clears throat> so, if you seek tantric initiation like this in order to have a good life, long life and so forth in this life and also a good life in the future as well as nirvana for yourself alone, there are wrong motivations to receive that. So, 
Therefore, it says the intelligence who seek the future lives should faithfully strive for transcendence and enter the mandala, not desiring the results for this life. If one strives for this life alone, the purpose of future lives will not be fulfilled. Striving for the benefit of the future lives will enhance the results in this one. <clears throat> and so thinking only of seeking seeking only the benefit for this life alone, and you will not actually fulfill the goal of this teaching. <clears throat> so you should have the motivation of compassion, the compassionate motivation <clears throat> to serve others and not thinking selfish m motive. And um, Chandrakirti also s says, compassion alone is important. In the beginning, in the middle, in the beginning means before entering the path, in the middle, after becoming a Bodhisattva, and in the end, after becoming a Buddha. And so, the, here, Master Chandrakirti in a Madhyamaka Avatara praises compassion for, first of all, as a seed for bodhicitta, and then in the middle, once you have become a bodhisattva, to enhance your bodhicitta further and further, and then uh, uh, progress along the path, and in the end, when you become a Buddha, as the fully ripened crop, to benefit others, and therefore he praises it other than pra and rather than praising the other qualities of the Buddha. So if one strives for this life alone, the purpose of future lives will not be fulfilled. Striving for the benefit of future life will enhance the results in this one as well. And then next is the disciples generating uh, into the principal deity. So that, uh, the earlier one was uh, bearing the correct motivation, or correcting one's motivation, and bearing the motivation of bodhicitta. And so, as I explained earlier, in order to achieve the form body of a Buddha, it, it, must, it comes from the collection of merit, where uh, the, the form body is for the uh, benefit of others, and then the dharma body is for uh, fulfilling one's aim. You need that of the collection of wisdom. So, of course, in the sutrayana also, there is the practice of accumulating merit as well, but to do that in a great way, what we must understand is that this body that we have now, the contaminated body, cannot actually turn into the Buddha's body. And therefore, we need to cultivate a special body. In the lower tantras, there is not much explanation of it, this. Because there is no explanation of uh, the practices on the basis of distinction between the degrees of subtlety within the mind, gross and subtle and subtle most, and so forth. So what we should do in Tantra is to, to transform our perception of the ourselves as ordinary and have the perception of oneself as a deity. Of course, this body that we have now, the made up of blood, bone, blood, and flesh, is not perceived in itself as becoming the body of a deity, but we should first dissolve it into emptiness. So as we say, everything dissolves into emptiness. And from within that meditation, of emptiness, from within the state of emptiness, you arise into the form of a deity. And so here, the sensory perceptions are not actually, um, they have no work. You use your mind itself 
and they're using that mind to meditate on emptiness, perceiving or thinking that there's nothing which is inherently existent, as uh, Madhyamaka Avatara says, uh, th through the sevenfold reasoning, so if things were to have any intrinsic ex inherent existence and so forth, so Master Chandakirti says that nothing has any inherent or independent existence, and because if you actually uh, posit or assert inherent existence, then there would be four different absurd consequences that you would that would fall on you. And then he says the things exist by way of convention alone, and conventions must not be uh, 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 called analyzed through the ultimate analysis. And so, the, if things were to have any uh, uh, true or inherent existence, then the conventions, conventional truth, would with, be able to withstand ultimate analysis, and therefore that is not the case. And therefore, nothing whatever has any inherent existence, but things exist merely by way of designation. As Mother, Master Nagarjuna's intention is that, he also says, whatever arises through dependence, into, into dependence is, is said to be empty, and that is also said to be designated in the middle way. Whatever arises through, de whatever is dependently arisen, um, there is nothing which is not dependently arisen, therefore there is nothing which is not uh, empty. And so Chetongkapa also says, so, Jetson Kappa says that within emptiness, understanding of emptiness, you should be able to assert the causality of things. And so, if we think through, there's nothing that is intrinsically existent, but the things do exist by way of convention alone. So Buddha himself cannot be found when we do scrutinize him. As Master Nagarjuna himself says in the 22nd chapter of Mula Madhyamaka Karika, he is not the uh, aggregates, nor the aggregates are uh, not different or separate from the aggregates. He does not possess the aggregates, nor the, pos the aggregates possess him. He is not uh, within the aggregates, and nor with uh, he, uh, the aggregates within him, and he does not possess um, the aggregates. What else is Tathagata? And so this verse can be used to you apply to yourself also. You can say, not uh, one with aggregates, not separate, not within the aggregates, nor am I within it, and I do not possess it, uh, the aggregates, who am I? So if you think of yourself, you, of course you have a body which is tangible, and then you say, my body, speech, and mind. So these body, speech, and mind are mine, you will say. 
But where is that you, I? And so if you think along this verse from Nagarjuna's 22nd uh, uh, chapter of Mula Madhimaka Karika, which I also use, you will find that you can't actually f pinpoint at something as being yourself. But self is not inexistent. Self or a person exists, but not intrinsically. And therefore, you meditate on emptiness, and you will be able to see that you are not the aggregates and so forth. And this appearance of the aggregates that you usually cling on to as being mine and yourself actually disappears. And then you, your mind is absorbed in emptiness. And from within that absorption in emptiness, you ever arise into a deity. And your body, speech, and mind as a deity do not exist intrinsically, as this mantra refers to. Om Swabhava Shuddha Sarva Dharma. Swabhava means empty of, devoid of, inherent existence. And Sarva Dharma means all dharmas, all phenomena also are devoid of any intrinsic existence. And so, Om Swabhava refers to you, and all Sarvadharma refers to all the aggregates and the other uh, phenomena. And so, you and the aggregates have no intrinsic existence. They are devoid of any intrinsic existence, whatever. And so, what you ascertain through this kind of analysis and is that of emptiness. So you ascertain emptiness. And so that mind which, is, which ascertains emptiness arises in the form of a deity. So having the ascertainment of emptiness, and then from within that state of mind with absorption in emptiness, absorbed in emptiness, you arise into a deity. And therefore, there is the cause for both the form body and the dharma body, dharmakaya and the, uh, the rupakaya. In tantra, this can be explained. But the detailed explanation cannot be done in the lower tantras. Like in this case, Avalokiteshvara initiation comes within the lower tantra here. And so everyone, please meditate on emptiness. Om Swabhava, thinking along this mantra, Om Swabhava Shuddha Sarva Dharma Swabhava Shuddha Hang. And also uh, the lines that I quoted from Mula Madhimaka Karita and also uh, Madh uh, Madhimaka Avatara. So if you think along these lines and reasonings, you will be able to ascertain that things exist merely through the appearance to the mind. Apart from that appearance to the mind, things cannot exist or do not exist. And so that you ascertain things whatever has no, any, uh, no intrinsic existence and absorb your mind in emptiness. And from within that state, you arise into Avalokiteshvara with one face and two um, uh, hands. Please repeat this. Please repeat. Please repeat. Oh, great, please, you are my teacher, so master, please pay attention to me, the firm way of great enlightenment, I beg you, O oh, great protector, please grant me the pledges, the spirit of enlightenment, the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, O oh, protector, please lead me to the supreme city of enlightenment, see the last two words three times. 
Oh, protector, please lead me to the Supreme City of Enlightenment. Oh, protector, please lead me to the Supreme City of Enlightenment, uh, liberation. And therefore, having said this three times, repeated this three times as a request, next is, uh, since the, you, the disciples, have total faith, and trust the master says my child come here so far you are carried away by your negative emotions because of which you created karmas and therefore you suffer and therefore you are overcome with suffering all the time but suffering is because it has cause and the cause is ultimately it